Hi guys, welcome to Remote Learning Day 13. Today we're going to go ahead and read Barbie, which is the next short story in the collection of short stories in Baseball in April. So go ahead and read along with me as I read aloud. The day after Christmas, Veronica Solis and her baby sister Yolanda nestled together on the couch to watch the morning cartoons. Bumbling Inspector Gadget was in trouble again, unaware that the edge of the cliff was crumbling under his feet. Soon he was sliding down the mountain toward a pit of alligators. He commanded, Go, go, Gadget Umbrella! And a red umbrella popped out of his hat. He landed safely just a few feet from a dark green alligator and dusted himself off. Veronica liked the show, but she was really waiting for the next one, My Little Pony. That show had lots of Barbie commercials, and Veronica was in love with Barbie. Her blonde hair, slim, her slim waist and long legs, and the glamorous clothes on tiny hangers. She had wanted a Barbie for as long as she could remember, and almost got one last Christmas, but her uncle Rudy, who had more money than all her other uncles combined, bought her the worst kind of doll, an imitation Barbie. Veronica had torn the silver wrapping off her, off her gift and found a black-haired doll with a flat, common nose. Not like Barbie's cute, upturned nose. She had wanted to cry, but she gave her uncle a hug, forced a smile, and went to her bedroom to stare at the doll. A tear slid down her cheek. You ugly thing, she snapped and threw the imposter against the wall. The doll lay on the floor eyes open like the dead. Immediately, Veronica felt ashamed. She picked up the doll and set it beside her. I'm sorry, I don't hate you, she whispered. It's just that you're not a real Barbie. She noticed that the forehead was chipped where her head struck the wall and that one of the eyelashes was peeling off like a scab. Oh no, she gasped. Veronica tried to push the eyelash back into place but it came off and stuck to her thumb. Doggone it, she mumbled and returned to the living room where her uncle was singing Mexican Christmas songs. He stopped to sip from his coffee cup and pat Veronica's hand. Did you name your doll yet? No, not yet. Veronica looked at the floor. She hoped that he wouldn't ask her to bring it out. Let's see her. I'll sing her a song, he teased. Veronica didn't, didn't want him to see that the doll's face was chipped and one of her eyelashes was gone. She's asleep, she said. Well, in that case, we'll let her sleep, he said. I'll sing her a lullaby, rockabye baby in Spanish. That was last year. There had been no Barbie this Christmas either. Today was just a cold winter morning in front of the television. Her uncle Rudy came over to the house with his girlfriend, Donna. Veronica's mother was uneasy. Why was the girlfriend here? Was this the moment? She dried her hands on a kitchen towel, towel and told the children to go play outside. She turned to the woman and, ignoring her brother, asked, What'd you get for Christmas? A robe and slippers, she said, looking at Rudy, then added, and a sweatsuit from my brother. Come, have a seat. I'll start coffee. Helen, would you call Veronica back inside, Rudy asked. We have an extra present for her. Okay, she said. Hurrying to the kitchen, her face worried because something was up and it could be marriage. She called, Veronica, your uncle wants you. Veronica dropped her end of the jump rope, leaving her sister and brother to carry on without her. She walked back into the house and stood by her uncle, but she couldn't take her eyes off the woman. How's school? asked her uncle. Fine, she said shyly. Getting good grades? Pretty good. As good as the boys? Better? Lots better. Any novios? <sniffs> Donna slapped Rudy's arm playfully. Rudy, quit teasing the child. Give it to her. Okay, he said, patting Donna's hand. He turned to Veronica. I have something for you. Something I know you wanted. Uncle Rudy's girlfriend reached in a package at her feet and brought out a Barbie doll and a striped one-piece swimsuit. This is for you, honey. Veronica stared at the woman, then at the doll. The woman's eyes were almost as blue and her hair almost as blonde as Barbie's. 
Veronica slowly took the Barbie from the woman and very softly said, Thank you. She gave her uncle a big hug, taking care not to smash Barbie against his chest. Veronica smiled at the woman, then at her mother, who returned from the kitchen with a pot of coffee and a plate of powdery white donuts. Look, Mom, a Barbie, Veronica said happily. Oh, Rudy, you're spoiling this girl, Mrs. Solis chided. And that's not all, Rudy said. Donna, show her the clothes. The woman brought out three outfits, a summer dress, a pantsuit, and a lacy gown the color of mother of pearl. They're lovely, said the mother. She held the summer dress up and laughed at how tiny it was. I like them a lot, said Veronica. It's just like on TV. The grown-ups sipped their coffee and watched Veronica inspect the clothes. After a few minutes, Rudy sat up and cleared his throat. I have something to say, he said to his sister, who already suspected what it was. We're getting married. Soon. He patted Donna's hand, which sported a sparkling ring, and announced a second time that he and Donna were getting married. The date wasn't set yet, but they would have their wedding in the spring. Veronica's mother, feigning surprise, lifted her eyes and said, Oh, how wonderful! Oh, Rudy! And Donna! She kissed her brother and the woman. Did you hear, Veronica? Your uncle is going to get married! She hesitated, then added, To Donna! Veronica pretended to look happy, but she was too preoccupied with her new doll. In her bedroom, Veronica hugged her Barbie and told her she was beautiful. She combed Barbie's hair with a tiny blue comb and dressed her in the three outfits. She made believe that Barbie was on a lunch date with a girlfriend from work, the fake Barbie with the chipped forehead and the mis and missing eyelash. Oh, look, boys, the ugly doll said. They're so cute. Oh, those boys, Barbie said coolly. They're okay, but Ken is so much more handsome and richer. They're good looking to me. I'm not as pretty as you, Barbie. That's true, Barbie said, but I still like you. How's your sandwich? Good, but not as good as your sandwich, the ugly doll answered. Veronica was eager to make Barbie the happiest person in the world. She dressed in a swimsuit and said in a fake English accent, You look smashing, my child. And who are you going to marry? the fake Barbie asked. The king, she announced. Veronica raised Barbie's movable arms. The king is going to buy me a yacht and build me a swimming pool. Veronica made Barbie dive into an imaginary pool. The king loves me more than money. He would die for me. Veronica played in her room all afternoon, and the next day called her friend Martha. Martha had two Barbies and one Ken. She invited Veronica to come over to play Barbies, and play they did. The three Barbies went to Disneyland and Magic Mountain and ate in an expensive restaurant where they talked about boys. Then all three took turns kissing Ken. Ken, you kiss too hard, Martha giggled. You forgot to shave, whined Veronica. Sorry, Ken said. That's better, they said, laughing and clacked the dolls' faces together. But at the end of the day, the two girls got into an argument when Martha tried to switch the Barbie so she would get Veronica's newer Barbie. Veronica saw that Martha was trying to trick her and pushed her against the bureau, yelling, You stupid cheater! She left with her three outfits and Barbie under her arm. At the corner, she hugged and kissed Barbie. That's the last time we're going to her house, said Veronica. She almost stole you. She sat on the curb, dressed Barbie in her pantsuit, then walked through an alley where she knew there was an orange tree. She stopped under the tree, which was heavy with oranges the size of softballs, and swiped one. As she walked home, she peeled the orange with her polished chipped nails and looked around the neighborhood. With her Barbie doll pressed under her arm, she was happy. The day was almost over, and soon she and Barbie would be sitting down to dinner. After she finished the orange, she wiped her hands on her pants and started to play with Barbie. Oh, it's a beautiful day to look pretty, Barbie said. Yes, I'm going to. Veronica stopped in mid-sentence. Barbie's head was gone. Veronica waved her hand over the space where a smile and blonde hair had been only a few minutes ago. Darn it, she hissed. 
Her head's gone. She fell to one knee and felt around. She picked up ragged leaves, loose dirt, and bottle caps. Where is it? She checked the leaf-choked gutter and raked her hand through the weeds along a fence. She slowly retraced her steps into the alley, desperately scanning the ground. She looked at the headless Barbie in her hand. She wanted to cry, but knew it would just make her eyes blurry. Where are you? Veronica called to the head. Please let me find you. She came to the orange tree. She got down and searched on all fours, but found nothing. She pounded the ground with her fists and burst into tears. She's ruined, Veronica sobbed. Oh, Barbie, look at you. You're no good anymore. She looked through her tears at Barbie and got mad. How could Barbie do this to her after only one day? For the next hour, she searched the street and the alley. She even knocked on Martha's door and asked her if she had seen Barbie's head. No, Martha said. She kept the door half closed because she was afraid that Veronica was still mad at her for trying to switch their Barbies. Did you lose it? It just fell off. I don't know what happened. It was brand new. How did it fall off? How do I know? It just fell off, stupid thing. Veronica looked so distressed that Martha went outside and helped her look, assuring Veronica that together they would find the head. One time I lost my bike keys at the playground, Martha said. I just looked and looked. I just got on my knees and crawled around. Nobody helped me. I found them all by myself. Veronica ignored Martha's chatter. She was busy parting weeds with her hands and overturning rocks and boards under which the head might have rolled. After a while, Veronica had a hard time concentrating and had to keep reminding herself what she was looking for. Head, she said. Look for the head but everything became jumbled together. She stared at the ground so long that she couldn't tell an eggshell from a splintered squirt gun. If only it could talk, wished Veronica, who was once again on the verge of tears. If only it could yell, over here, I'm here by the fence, come and get me. She blamed herself, then Martha. If they hadn't had that argument, everything would have been all right. She would have played and then returned home. She probably jinxed her Barbie when she pushed Martha against the chest of drawers. Maybe that was when Barbie's head had come loose. She had been holding Barbie while she fought Martha. When it began to get dark, Martha said she had to go. But I'll help you tomorrow if you want, she said. Veronica puckered her mouth and shouted, It's all your fault. You made me mad. You tried to cheat me. My Barbie was more beautiful than yours. And now see what you've done? She held the headless Barbie up for Martha to see. Martha turned away and ran. That night, Veronica sat in her room. She felt that she had betrayed Barbie by not caring for her. She couldn't stand to look at her. She wanted to tell her mother, but she knew Mom would scold her for being a Mensa. If only I could tell Uncle Rudy's girlfriend, she said. She would understand. She would do something. Finally, Veronica dressed in her nightie, brushed her teeth, and jumped into bed. She started reading a library book about a girl in New York City who had lost her cat, but tossed it aside because the words on the page meant nothing. It was a made-up story, while her own sadness was real. I shouldn't have gone, said Veronica, staring at the ceiling. I should have stayed home and played by myself. She sat up and tried to read again. She couldn't concentrate. She picked at a scab on her wrist and tried to lull herself to sleep with sad thoughts. When she couldn't stand it any more, she kicked off the blankets and walked over to her Barbie, which lay on a chest of drawers. She picked up the fake Barbie, too. Let's go to sleep, she whispered to both dolls and carried them lovingly to bed. All right, so the first day, as always, we're going to concentrate on the main idea. This time, we're going to add in... Um, add in looking for supporting details to support a main idea. So there's an anchor chart right there for your help if you need it. Um, if you turn to today's daily task, you'll see that the main idea is being given to you. Uh, whenever we start with the main idea, we want to start with the topic. In a fictional text, the topic is generally the main character. So you can see that Veronica 
is the topic of our main idea. So the main idea of this text is that Veronica was unhappy with the fake Barbie her uncle had given her, but when she receives a real Barbie and it becomes damaged, she realized that it doesn't matter. So your task is to find three details that support that main idea. So just keep in mind that you want to make sure that you're having relative supporting details. So um, see if you can kind of divide the main idea into different sections and then support each part of that main idea. Um, the picture that I want of your work is of this chart today. So make sure that when you finish up, snap a picture of this chart in your packet and send it to me. Thank you so much. Have a nice night.